Hey you guys, Woody here. Thanks for joining us again. If you've been uh, staying in tune with us for the last uh, last short while, uh, you know that we're making a series of videos, specifically uh, requested videos on how to do a cast with a mold. Um, they're short videos, they're very to the point, five, six, seven minutes each. The previous video that was just before this video, uh, if, you're, if you're keeping up with the series, should be the short arm cast with the interosseous mold. The, the video we're gonna do right now for you, we're gonna do a short arm cast with an ulnar deviation. So it should the cast, which would normally be a neutral cast, a nice straight arm, short, short straight arm cast, we're gonna do it with an ulnar deviation. And, and, that, and we're gonna talk about why the provider would order that. So we're gonna go ahead and get into that right now. So the first thing to know when you're doing um, when you're doing a short arm cast, or or for that matter, it could be a long arm, but whatever. Regardless, when you're doing a, a, an upper extremity cast, and and the doctor's ordered an ulnar deviation, what you want to do is unlike the standard cast where you would put the the stocking net on and you would start rolling the cotton. What you actually want to do is you want to get the patient if they're able. You want to get the patient, let me slide this on, and thank you, sir. You want to get the patient to help you by, and what you, what you want to do is just verbally ask them to drop at the wrist, and what you, and this is exactly why right here. You want, as you're making the cast, you want to make sure you never have any wrinkles in there. And guys, we've gone through this dozens and dozens of videos already. You want to eliminate any kind of creases. Nope, don't help me, I'll do it. You don't, you don't want to have any kind of creases or wrinkles in there, as little to none as possible. You don't want to have any kind of skin breakdown. And if you have, if you have to go back to it, there you go. Just like so. And then we'll do the, the little thumb thing that you've seen us do a ton of times. I'm not gonna do an entire video of wrapping and wrapping like you've seen in all the videos. I'm not going to waste your time with that. There you go, sir. But what I want to emphasize on the stocking net and the beginning of the cast, you want to keep them nice and neutral, but you want to start kind of putting in the patient's head what, what you're going to try to do. So we're going to, that's kind of where the stocking net would go. We'll pause there and I'll get the cotton ready. Now, when you're doing the cotton, so again, re, just recheck yourself here. A lot of us that have been doing this for ages, we all we all know that we were tech. You know, back in, in the origins of all this, we would start at the wrist, we would create our anchor, and we would work our way up through the palm, and so on and so forth. And we'd come up here and we'd cut or crease, or or we would shear, like so, and we would go on with the thing. But in this particular cast, because you want to get a good ulnar deviated mold, which you can do instead an option, an option would be to start at the palm. Start at the palm, get rid of all your wrinkles, go through there once or twice. And this way, when you go to get that, that mold that the doctor's ordered, when you go to get that mold, you're not gonna have an overabundance of cotton there. You're gonna come through here just like that. And if you notice, shoot that down, I'll stop right there. Now, you've already started addressing the wrist. So now, we just come through one more time and we start working our way down the arm. And you guys have already seen exactly how we work our way down the arm. So we're gonna finish this off like we always do. We're gonna come back and we're gonna talk about the fiberglass next. So when you go to start laying the fiberglass on there, you can see, you can see that we still have them in position. I've taken a three inch, I folded it in, I fan folded it twice so that I turned a three inch more like into a one inch and of course we've wet the fiberglass and, and we're gonna go on with this procedure. There we go. 
and then I've used my fan fold to create the strength at the Palmer crease there and then I'm going to use my cut for the top layer to make it look nice and slick and professional and because because this young man has a larger arm, we'll go on and repeat this process so that we end up using two full rolls of fiberglass for strength reinforcement. Tuck the edges in, tuck the edges in, come around, and again, we're trying to maintain that ulnar deviation there. So as you start to come to the wrist here, check for wrinkles. Make sure that the hand is dropped down in that position that we started with. Why would the doctor order a cast in this position is the usual question that you would get from the patient or from the parents. And the, the, the fact of the matter is, is the most common reasons a provider would order a cast in this position is A, post reduction, uh, B, uh, there's a few different types of fractures. For example, like if you had a fracture that involved uh, the the styloid head, the tip of the styloid, etc. Somewhere we're, we're we're really really trying to focus on not only the, the the healing of the bone, but also the alignment of the bone. And with a little deviation in the cast, the hope is that you will diminish the chances, the odds of surgery. By, by doing a really, really well done cast. So we're gonna stop with this first roll of fiberglass on purpose, because I wanna show you guys a couple things. The previous video you saw us doing an inner osseous mold, where we were flattening out, we were flattening the cast. This one, what you're gonna do, without making a crease here, you're going to basically, I don't, I don't, I don't recommend crunching this down, that's not the right thing to do, fingers out for me. What you want to do, believe it or not, is you actually want to kind of elongate it just a little, and you want to make it comfortable. You don't want to crunch it down and create a wrinkle. Remember in your head, these are long bones. They're long bones. They're not meant to be crunched down. If anything, you want to, if you watch my hands here, you want to squeeze, you want to squeeze and tilt, just like that. You don't want to do a hard edge you don't want to use your fingers. You don't want to create a crease or a wrinkle or a ripple. You just want to, I'll take this glove off so you can see what I'm doing. You want to basically do like so. And you can actually see here, if you look right here, you can see what I'm doing. You can see the fiberglass. As I'm doing this, you can see what I'm doing here. And you want to hold it in position. Just like that while it's hardening. And then of course you'd re, you'd re-glove this hand and you go ahead and do your inner osseous mold. And as you can see, we're getting a cast with a nice ulnar deviation, which if the concern is with the radial, the radial bone, the radius, if it's a radial neck fracture or styloid fracture or some kind of alignment issue, the hope is that this position, if that's what's ordered by the provider, will aid the patient. And as we get into the next video, the next uh, molding video, you'll see how we'll, we're going to do a volar mold like this. We're going to do a volar mold. And in some cases, the doctor will actually order, the doctor will order an ulnar deviated cast with a volar mold. Those do go hand in hand. So we will talk about that a little bit in the next video as well.